Thank you for joining us on At Issue. I'm H. Wayne Wilson, and today we're going to talk about a specific piece of legislation that was signed by Governor Quinn last August. I mean August of 2013, and it was the signature that implemented the Compassionate Use of Cannabis Pilot Program Act. And what that means is that certain individuals with medical conditions can actually get cannabis to treat that condition. Uh, the implementation of that is taking quite some time. We'll find out why it takes so long. And to help us with that discussion, we have Dr. Gerald McShane. Dr. McShane is the CEO of OSF Medical Group. Dr. McShane, thank you so much for joining thank us. Thank you, H. And also joining the program is Dave Leach. Uh, many of you are familiar with Dave. He is the Republican representative in the state legislature for, the, uh, for Peoria and north of Peoria also. Dave, thank you as always. Thank you, H. And Liz Skinner is joining us. Liz is the mayor of the, is it a town or city of Delavan? City of Delavan. City of Delavan, big time. 1700. 1700. But still city. Yes. All right. Thank you very much, Liz, mm -hmm. for joining us. Uh, let's start with you, doctor, because sure. we probably mm -hmm. need a definition of cannabis. Sure. Now, cannabis uh, typically is what we call marijuana today, and that's what this act is about. But specifically, uh, cannabis is made up of multiple chemicals of a family called cannabinoids, and there's several active ingredients today that create the euphoria effect in, in um, the use of marijuana recreationally. Um, the uh, specific uh, effects medicinally uh, may fall into some of those chemicals that we've not yet identified which ones are the more potent ones that may be uh, believed to be helpful in the conditions we're going to talk about today. Um, our bodies have a cannabinoid system in our brain, our neural, our neural ner nervous system has a set of cells, nerve cells, and in much of our tissue, muscle, white cells, there are little receptors that are affected by these cannabinoids. And so there's a lot known about the neuroscience of the cannabinoid system, and in fact, we produce also endocannabinoids, which is an internally manufactured Cannab you know, cannabinoid, similar to what you find in a plant of marijuana. So that's the basis for um, its uh, pharmacological basis. Um, medicinally, it's been used for thousands of years. In fact, uh, brought over to the United States from India in 1840. Um, it's been used in the 1930s. It was uh, taxed. It was used recreational and medicinally in the 30s, probably to the 70s. Uh, I have to believe that, that I, the, the hippies and the Haida Ishbury uh, of the yuppies, uh, or the, the, the hippies at that time, uh, created a, 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 a clamp down to the use of marijuana. And, and we're, it's, it's a repeating cycle as I look at the marijuana so discussion. Let, let me see if I understand. Yeah. We, we, we know that marijuana does uh, treat certain conditions at least, uh, but there, there are other issues that we don't know anything about that might be side effects? We, we know that uh, there are some FDA approved uh, pharmacologically manufactured cannabinoids. Uh, several indications are nausea and vomiting from chemotherapy and cancer. Um, other, other conditions similar to that are used. Those are on the market right today. But they're very tightly controlled, it's expensive, and it's not used for anything else. Um, so we know that certain, the chemicals that we, that are in this plant, the 60 chemicals, unfortunately we don't know enough about them. They haven't been tested uh, in, in trials that we normally uh, equate with good pharmacology. That's, that's the issue here for our physicians. They do not really, and no one really knows. And so we have a lot of anecdotal evidence that it helps in certain conditions. There are various guidelines and consensus statements from, say, neurology um, that indicate that in certain conditions of tremor, uh, spasticity, spasticity from MS, from multiple sclerosis, it does show some effectiveness. So all that has not really been played out yet, mostly because of it's, it's, it's a class one controlled substance uh, uh, and it's not really been able to be researched adequately. That's where. The, that's where we're at in the United States today. So the, uh, clear, clearly the patient-centered approach to this, people are suffering. They have conditions that there are really no good answers for. And some people view that this helps. And so that's, that's where we are today. So. 
Okay, that's, that's a medical discussion. How about a legislative discussion? Well, I would add to that. I think it's very unfortunate that the federal government itself has been the reason why there has been no uh, scientific investigation of the efficacy of uh, medical marijuana. And I think the federal government is largely to blame for the problems that we've had throughout our society because of its unwillingness to uh, study marijuana, understand it better, and to uh, understand the history that Dr. McShane just referenced. So what do you attribute uh, as the, the reason why the legislature decided to pass a, a medical cannabis bill? I think it's for the reasons that the doctor identified. There are many, many people who had been lobbying the General Assembly. Uh, who were su had been suffering from uh, epilepsy, needed relief from cancer pain. Uh, I was always amused. There was a senior partner at Jones Day, a very prominent law firm in Chicago, who had uh, kind of a Crohn's disease uh, vari variant that he was always embarrassed and worried that he'd get caught out on the streets because his, he desperately needed the palliative effects of marijuana. And so I think we saw across the board a lot of people who were really in need of it. Um, I must confess, I did not vote for the bill because I thought the bill was far too cumbersome in its... Uh, labyrinth of regulation. And I also think that the people who are underground are the ones who actually understand the different calibrations of marijuana to uh, provide it to people who uh, have medical need for it. I want to talk about uh, the legislative process a little bit further, but first, just for clarification, Crohn's disease is a disease of the stomach? Uh, the small intestine and large intestine, correct. And it's, it's one of the, in the law, one of the qualifying conditions which allows for that person to get it. And we'll talk a little bit more yeah. about that uh, momentarily, but you're on JCAR, a Joint Committee on Administrative Rules? Correct. And uh, ex explain how, wh why JCAR exists, so that we all know that you, you pass a bill, but that's not necessarily the end of the legislative process. No, I think very often uh, we hear that people are frustrated because they've seen a bill pass, but then when the rules are promulgated, it's very different than what the intent of the law was. JCAR is in place to assure that the rulemaking implementing a piece of legislation comports with the legislation itself. In other words, that there is an overreach in the rulemaking that goes beyond the legislative authority provided in the law itself. And it's, I must tell you, it is a very, very fascinating uh, committee uh, because we have three members from each caucus, uh, Senate, House, Republican, Democrat, so there are 12 of us, and we review these rules each month and um, vote accordingly. Was, was there a particular stumbling block or an issue with regard to no, this? No, I think this law was so uh, complicated, has so many different agencies in it, and it has taken a great deal of time for each of these agencies to come forth with their rules, then there are periods of time for comment, and so then it, it extends the time to iron out any differences that people have and to come up with a final set of rules. Uh, the representative mentioned that there's so many different agencies involved, and one of those is the Department of Agriculture, which mm -hmm. will oversee the licensing of cultivation centers, and that's, that's right. what uh, the city of Delavan is hoping to attract. Uh, that's right. You know, I, I have to say, it's the last several years have been tough times for small communities like Delavan. And you don't have to drive very far here in central Illinois or throughout the state to see the many communities that are dying or have died. And um, we're fortunate in town. We have a very aggressive city council. 
And rather than letting Delavan continue down that slippery slope, we said we're going to take action. We're going to take the bull by the horns and do what we can to stop this. We've been able to do that. Um, we've taken some aggressive action uh, regarding our infrastructure, putting TIF districts in place, and we are seeing a resurgence of our local downtown business district, a new subdivision developing onto the north side. We were approached then early in 2014 by a, a group who was interested in establishing a cultivation center. And after meeting with them, we realized what a great opportunity it would be to further economic development in the city of Delavan, and what a huge shot in the arm it would be for our school district. So we didn't hesitate to jump on board. And um, consequently, we were one of the first communities in the state of Illinois to do so. Can you give us an idea of when you say economic boost, what what kind of a boost? Financially, it certainly will be uh, mean additional money for the school district, and it will be financial monies for the city as well. But we're looking at a minimum of 50 new jobs coming to Delavan, which would make it the second largest employer in town. When we talk about a cultivation center, what, what are we talking about, Dave? Well, it's a very large facility where hydroponically the marijuana is grown, and it's uh, like a fortress. <laughs> well, I, I guess there are that's cameras what and guards, and it, it, all manner of uh, and, and because, security there. Because people can get marijuana any time of the year. Is it under glass, or is, is that how it works? It's undercover. It's, it's all a, it's all enclosed, grown hydroponically. Yes, and it's very secure. In fact, I'll never be in that facility once it's built. No member of our council. It will uh, be limited only to the employees. It's under 24-hour surveillance by the state police. It's very very secure. We should uh, clarify that uh, you're one of at least four applicants yes. in this particular state police district. There mm -hmm. are 22 state police districts. Each gets a cultivation center. So the one in central Illinois uh, is at District 8, I believe, is our district. Mm -hmm. And uh, they will uh, get one. So there, I think outside of Varna, southern Peoria County, Pekin, and uh, of course, Delavan. Um, so let's talk about the process, doctor. Sure. Mm -hmm. um, I'm, let, let's say that I have a qualifying condition. Mm -hmm. What are some examples of qualifying sure. conditions? Um, a person with cancer and pain would be a qualifying condition. A person with um, uh, hepatitis C and, and chronic pain. Uh, persons with congenital uh, or drug-resistant epilepsy. Uh, there are certain pediatric conditions and hereditary syndromes that require, uh, ep that have epilepsy that are drug-resistant. There's really no treatment for it. That would be one. Number of chronic fibromyalgia, severe fibromyalgia. Um, how, how many total are there? There's about 30. About 30? Yeah. In, in so can you go through the process? Sure. I mean, uh, mm -hmm. what, what are the, the rules? Because the rules are set up by, yeah. I suppose, by JCAR they were set up. In right, right. Now let me explain our position at OSF Healthcare. We have a number of employed physicians, quite large, 400. And so we, we needed to wrap our, our, our arms around this to, to give some guidance on this. And our guidance is that we, we don't require it, nor do we prohibit the certification process of a person. So our physicians will decide themselves whether they want to participate in certification or not. We don't believe that we can force them. We don't want to force them. Um, the process is, the, and through state rules, there are a number of forms that are, that are available that have to be used that basically certify this patient has this condition. They're over 18. Um, uh, they're likely to benefit. They don't have to be certain it'll benefit, but likely to benefit from it and the physician certifies that, signs it. They're not prescribing. Uh, the the uh, physician then is to mail that to the Department of Public Health. And, and that, that ends the physician involvement at that point in time. Uh, the physician has to have a relationship with that patient, so you just can't go to a doctor who only does uh, certifications of marijuana. There has to be an ongoing treatment relationship. Uh, in, in this particular certifying process. So that person then will, uh, that patient will be certified and registered by the state. I don't know the process exactly, but I know there's fingerprinting, 
number of things that are done, uh, verification and to allow them to be given a card. And then there's very specific rules about that patient and um, carrying the marijuana. They cannot drive, prohibiting school bus driving. Uh, I think there's a, med a tamper-proof medical medicine container that when they drive with it, they have to have in it. There's also a provision for a caregiver, and a lot of the patients that we're talking about are symptomatically in pain, and you know we're talking about complex patients that have real serious problems. We're not, you know, that they need caregivers, so the caregiver has to abide by some rules too, but can go pick it, the, pick the medicine up, and it's on a two-week basis. Uh, two and a half grams is what the rule states, and. Uh, on that basis. So there isn't a prescription per se. Right, there's no prescription and you know part of the, our physician angst about all this is uh, many of our patients are uh, as I said complex on a number of medications they could be on opiates, they could be on antidepressants and now we're asked to give them uh, marijuana and or prescribe certified and you know we have concerns about how all those interact we don't know how they interact so that's one of our problems. I mean, one of our first things is do no harm. And so physicians will be reluctant, they'll have to make judgments, and that, that'll be complex. That'll cause some conflict at the patient-doctor relationship. Doctor may not feel comfortable, the patient wants it. So we're gonna have to work, it'll take a time to work through all that, so. We've talked about the Department of Agriculture yeah. overseeing yeah. the Cultivation Center. Uh, we've talked about the Department of Public Health overseeing the process for uh, getting a card. And then we have the Department of, uh, of uh, Financial and uh, Professional Regulation, and that oversees the dispensaries. So there's a dispensary after the cultivation center. It goes to a dispensary? Correct. And uh, as you may know, I believe there are five different agencies, and there are hefty fees involved with each one. So I think the state has pretty well covered the basis to milk this for as much as it can possibly come up with. But yeah, the, then there are the dispensaries. Those two have very tight security requirements involved with those. And uh, as Dr. McShane indicated, <coughs> the, uh, the prescription card has to be available only to people over 18. And it's gonna be very interesting to see how it all unfolds. Uh, there are going to be up to 60 uh, uh, distribution or dispensary uh, centers in the state of Illinois. Uh, now there's a fee. Once, once the relationship is established with the doctor, there's a continuing relationship and you authorize medical cannabis. Do you send the form into the Department of Public Health? Yeah, we, we certify that the patient meets the qualification and is likely to benefit. Then there's a fee that the patient pays uh, for the card, yes. For, for the card. Uh, I believe it's $100. I think there's some veterans get it for 50 something like that. Um, so all they do is they show the card when they go to the dispensary? They, yeah, they don't need the I prescription, believe. as he indicated. No, it, it just, they're qualified or designated as eligible to have uh, medical marijuana, and so they present that and yeah. then yeah. are able to purchase yeah. marijuana. I think the public health department will keep a database of all the patients that have been certified. And that's mm -hmm. it. I mean, then they're able to go, then the dispensary will have information that who's in the database when they get it and they'll follow it that way. So there's no need, it's not a prescribing uh, uh, process. Um, um, if a person uh, f at some point in time fails to meet a qualifying condition, we're obligated to report it to the public health that they don't further qualify and then they'll be taken off that list is how I understand the process. And, and that's why there should be a continuing yeah. relationship between yeah, the patient right, and doctor. Right, right, right. Uh, we should point out uh, that uh, the uh, deadline for applications for the cultivation centers is September the 22nd, uh, that there is an application process for those who want to uh, see if they can get uh, medical marijuana. 2,000 applied in the first three days those are for people, only people in the first half of the alphabet. People with M through Z as the start of their last name would wait until November for application process. Let me turn to uh, Mayor Skinner again. Uh, marijuana can be a controversial topic. It, mm -hmm. It's uh, federal government says it's illegal right now, correct? Correct. 
Uh, so what's the response of the community? Because we know Delavan is, is relatively conservative. It is a, a relatively conservative community, but I'll tell you, overwhelmingly, overwhelmingly, the citizens in our community are definitely in favor of this. Um, there has been, I would say controversy has been non-existent over this issue. Um, I think there are enough people that certainly um, have loved ones who have had chronic uh, medical conditions and pain. I think people can certainly relate and understand to that. I think there's a very clear distinction that people see of medical marijuana versus illegal and recreational drug use. In most people's mind, that's a clear distinction. Um, but really, there has been no controversy. With that in mind, Representative, um, it, is this not a radical idea? I don't think, uh, no, I don't think it's a radical idea. I think it's one that's been occurring for generations. Since the beginning of time, people have been self-medicating with marijuana and with street drugs, for that matter. So I don't view the use of medical marijuana as radical in any, any way. I think it's, it's time to uh, make it available and more importantly to accelerate the research about it. I think it's very unfortunate that the federal government has been so, in my view, ridiculous in its treatment of marijuana and has prohibited even the research of elements. All over Europe, for example, there are pharmaceutical companies who are embracing uh, medical marijuana and, in fact, are in a land rush to try and create uh, pills that would replicate uh, the effects of different uh, ca categories of marijuana. So, You're Shaking your head yes. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's what's going to... It's. I think it will become a typical pharmacological medication, you know, go through a process of study which of those chemicals really work. Now, my concern with that would be, is it going to create such a costly activity that it becomes not, not affordable? And so, you know, the, the affordability will be a factor here that, that we may not move down that road. And I'm just saying inhaled marijuana, which has some complications, inhaling smoke uh, may be a, a, a less expensive than, than the, the, the true, you know, me medical pharmacological approach to, to this treatment. So. See, one of the reasons yeah. this has been so, yeah. so yeah. Yeah. complicated and so controversial is it's really in a, in a perfect storm of big interest groups because you have the pharmacists, you have the doctors, you have, in the case of mental health issues, psychiatrists, you have, in the uh, law enforcement community, in drug raids, the police get to confiscate whatever's there and take it and spend the, spend the uh, money. I mean, so the individual who may need to have some uh, palliative effects of medical marijuana is really kind of been, you know, at a loss because all these other issues, of course, the public is very, very concerned about it, but there, there's so much of this turmoil that is on the periphery that uh, the real issue of medical treatment has been lost in the shuffle. Let me, um, just for clarification purposes, mm -hmm. the city of Delavan actually doesn't make the application. No, it is uh, the company that is looking to build the cultivation center. They will be making the application. Now, certainly we have assisted along the way, even in helping to select a location and that kind of thing, but it is the company that is making the application. ICC Holdings out of Joliet? Yes, that's correct. And will, will it be part of the city? Will you annex it, the, that property? Yes, we definitely will, and it'll be a part of a new TIF district. Okay, a tax increment financing district. Yes. Um, and how big is the territory, the, the, the cultivation center? Ten acres. Is, is that set by law, ten acres? Is that? No. No? No. It just happens to be what? Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, and with that, we have run out of time. Mm -hmm. I want to thank uh, both Dr. McShane. Dr. Gerald McShane is the CEO of OSF Medical Group. 
We thank you and we thank uh, Liz Skinner, who's the mayor of the city of Delavan, for the conversation. Okay. And also, as always, we thank Representative Dave Leach, thank you. Uh, who uh, represents the city of Peoria, Republican down in Springfield. Thank you so much for joining us on, on that issue. Next week, we're going to take a look at uh, Ferguson, Missouri. Not specifically Ferguson, but what might happen if a similar situation presented itself in central Illinois? The aftermath of Ferguson, Missouri, on the next At Issue.